Hi, so we have a view of progress. That is, things today were better than they were yesterday and they'll be even better tomorrow. Now, setting aside whether that's true or not, we have that view. And of course, we swap that view around, because if things today are better than they were yesterday, they're a hell of a lot better than they were a very long time ago. Now, we're sort of obsessed with washing. We have these things all over the place. You sh bath and shower once, twice, sometimes three times a day. Ergo, our ancestors must have been filthy beasts indeed. Who's that then? I don't know. Must be a king. Why? He hasn't got shit all over him. But that view, which is understandable, is far from true. Actually, the most common found thing in grave goods from ancient burials are combs. People took incredible care of themselves throughout the centuries. The Middle Ages is one of the weirdest things that's well recorded, where bathing and clothes washing were extremely important to them, and that's contrary to our impression of the Middle Ages. Laundry, removing the smell and the dirt from clothes, has been with us ever since we've had clothes. It's come a long way, that's for sure. Because at first, of course, we just went down to the local stream and beat the clothes on a rock. And then as villages grew up, communal washing places were built, wash houses where people would gather to wash their clothes. And predominantly through history, of course, this has been a woman's job. So the women would go down to the wash hole or the wash house and wash clothes by hand. And of course, that is a tremendous chore. It has been argued that the mechanisation of washing and the introduction of washing machines was one of the great contributors to women's liberation. And if you think about the process of washing, it consists of beating the clothes in water to loosen the dirt, grease and smelly bits, giving it a rinse and then wringing it out and then hanging it out to dry. And of course the first machines just repeated this. So you've got things like butter churns that you churn so that the washing lifted up, fell into water, lifted up, fell into the water. And if you think about our current top-loading machines, those paddle arms in the drum do exactly the same kind of thing. Because it wasn't long before you got a washing tub where you got um, a piece of equipment like a stool that you stuck in there and you turned that by hand. Now that is very similar to the American and Canadian top-loader if you think about it. The energy usage associated with washing and drying is also surprising. In England, we use something like 12% of our household consumption of energy is for washing and drying, of which 6% is for drying. And of course, this has not escaped people's notice. And an awful lot of washing machine manufacturers are now trying to get us to wash at lower temperatures to save on that heating cost. But washing is a thing that should be, I think, one of our focuses. This, it's a fairly typical European washing machine, it's a front loader. Like say in Canada and the US they more often use a top loader and if you can argue about something people will argue about it and the relative merits of front loading and top loading are a continued argument. For our case though this is pretty good. This is pretty good because the mechanics in here are far simpler. We need to agitate the clothes. In this one the drum goes round, the paddles pick it up and the clothes drop into the water. In a top loader you need to change direction of the agitator otherwise you just force the water out. And that need to change it makes it mechanically more complex although top loaders do wash the clothes in half the time of a front loader. So there are pros and cons on both sides. But for what we want to do I think the European design is going to be pretty awesome. So let's get the top off and have a look inside. So now I've got this to pieces we can see how fundamentally simple it is. All I've done is remove the top, the front and the concrete blocks that sit here and here. They're stabilising blocks but what we've got is a stainless steel drum inside a big plastic drum. The way the washing machine works is it's got a valve here that lets the water in washing past your washing powder and your fabric softener and it fills the drum to a level gives a little bit of time to sew and then it starts the wash cycle. The wash cycle uses these arms to pick up your clothes, drop it back down, pick up the clothes, drop it back down. It does that for a bit. Once it's done that for a bit, it then begins to drain and for that it's going to pump at the bottom there with the outlet just behind here, drains out the water, puts some more fresh water in, does the same thing, 
drains it and then goes into spin speed and because spin speed is quite fast and we have a lump of clothes here which is why we have the concrete blocks because this whole thing is free to move in the casing it's free to move in the casing because at spin speed if it wasn't it would shake the thing to pieces or shake your kitchen to pieces and the concrete blocks stabilize that movement but they prevent it the whole case actually moving now this thing works from one single motor it's a universal motor, so it's capable of spinning at different speeds, and we don't need any gearbox. And the whole thing drives this fan belt, which it's goes the pulley. on the pulley belt. And there's the fan belt on the pulley belt going through the plastic under bearing to the inner stainless steel drum. Now, by the motor is a small heating element to change the temperature of the water. So if you think about it, that's actually stunningly simple, because all of the work for this comes from that single motor, and it's connected to a pulley belt and to a pulley. All of the control, of course, comes from the control board, but all the control is doing is timing when the water goes in and out, and then the speed of the motor. So if we can replace that motor and motor spindle with another drive system, then clearly we're able to run our washing machine from a whole host of things. Taking the motor off, here it is, and extract the, the rotor. Now, it went in that way with the pulley in that orientation. If we turn it around that way, we can use the same pulley and we're using this section here as a cog. So all I've got to do is put something in there, stuff that in there, put a U cradle and belt on that, turn in that, should turn that. And that becomes a cog to drive the actual washing machine. And that's it in place. Now we put a drive belt round there and put that in place. And then we have an external drive. <laughs> So, I connected my external drive up to on an upside down bicycle. That's only because it's easier for me. Clearly you could have the bicycle the other way just as well as you could have it upside down. And obviously you can attach anything to this. I'm going to do, use a bicycle just to demonstrate it actually works. But you could as easily connect it to a wind turbine or like Miele did, connect it to a water motor. If you wanted, you could connect it to a gravity device where you just drop a weight and it'll spin this wheel which will spin the drum. So once you get the external bit done, connecting it to absolutely anything else is a piece of cake. I've left the front off still so we can see it working, but we could put everything back on and just have a normal looking washing machine, except it's got an external drive now, and because it's got an external drive system, we can run it from a whole range of things. Anyway, let's have a look at it turning. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that go! That's awesome. That's a, that's a real spin <laughs> No, not yet, mate, not but yet. it's quite a rotation. Okay, granted that was about as crazy as a bag of kittens and it was empty. But you're going to put something like this to be about 7 kilos of washing in here and somewhere around about 10 or 15 kilos of water. So it's certainly very doable. And we put the front back on, it doesn't interfere at all. And that was a relatively easy turn. So the possibility is certainly there. I mean, I strapped it to a bicycle because I had a bicycle. Clearly you could strap it to a whole host of things and like I mentioned, a water motor like Miele did in their water motor driven washing machine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it gave you some ideas, thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.